Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If you've worked with vectors in 2D space before, then it's possible you've already done dot products in two dimensions, but if you haven't, it's okay. Dot products are easy to learn. To calculate a dot product, we simply start by multiplying component-wise. So here you can see I'm multiplying the first component in V, which is V1, by the first component W1. Then I do the same thing with the second components in each vector. Once we multiply these, then we add up what we get for our answer. The process is the same in 3D space with three-dimensional vectors. We just have an additional component in each vector. So we multiply component-wise, which will now be three multiplications. So you can see V1 and W1 still give us the first product. V2 and W2 still give the second product. And now an additional V3 and W3 give a third product. And then we add all those values up just like before, and that gives us our dot product. Something really important to notice here right away about dot products, when we added two vectors together in vector addition, the answer was a vector. And when we did scalar multiplication, we also got a vector for an answer as well. When we compute the dot product, though, we get an answer that's a real number, or what we call a scalar. So with a dot product, we get an entirely different type of object than these other operations we've been taking you through so far in our series here. Let's real quick just do a couple of examples of working through dot products with you. So we're going to find v dot w for the given vectors here, and vector v is 3 comma 5 comma negative 1 in three-dimensional space because three components here, and vector w is negative 2 comma 1 comma negative 4. So our dot product here, v dot w, we're just going to take the first component of each, so I'll take my first component of V and I'll multiply it by my first component of W, so 3 times negative 2. Then we're going to add the next product of components, so we'll go ahead and add the product of 5 and 1. Those are the second components in each vector, and then we'll add what we get when we take the product of the last components, negative 1 and negative 4. So if we do all this here, we'll get negative 6 plus 5, plus positive 4 here, so that'll actually give us a positive 3 for our dot product of vectors v and w here. Let's do one more. Here we've got vectors v is negative 3, comma 0, comma negative 6 this time. Vector w is 7, comma 2, comma negative 2. Again, just finding v dot w. So here v dot w is going to be the product of our first components, negative 3 and positive 7, plus what we get when we take the product of the next components, 0 and 2, plus what we get when we take the product of the last components, negative 6 and negative 2. So here we'll get negative 21, 0 times 2, that's 0. This would be positive 12 here, so we'll get negative 21 plus 0 plus 12. That gives us negative 9 for this dot product. So we already mentioned that the dot product of two vectors gives us a scalar, a real number, as an answer. And we want to show you what this dot product actually means once you get it. The dot product actually tells us about the relationship between the lengths of the vectors and the angle between them. This formula you see here, the dot product of two vectors, is equal to their magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between them. This theta is the angle between the vectors. This comes from the law of cosines, actually. We're not going to show the proof of where this formula comes from, since this video is already going to have a lot of stuff in it. But if you're interested, almost any textbook that has information about vectors and dot products will show you how the formula comes from the law of cosines. It's pretty common to see this formula rearranged so that it's solved for cosine of theta, since one of the main uses of this formula is actually finding the angle between two vectors. Let's go ahead and do an example of that now. So we say find the angle between the vectors v, which is 5 comma 2 comma 1, and the vector w, 3 comma negative 3 comma negative 2. So if I go ahead and write down my formula that I had before was that cosine of theta was equal to the dot product of those vectors, so v dot w is on top, and the magnitudes are multiplied on the bottom. So we would have the magnitude of v times the magnitude of w on the bottom. So what we'll need to do is actually figure out all the components here, and then we'll have to undo this cosine to say what theta is. So let's first figure out what v dot w is. So v dot w, we'll do that over here. 
Well, that's going to be 5 times 3 plus 2 times negative 3 plus 1 times negative 2. And so that'll be 15. This would be minus 6 minus 2 more. So that's actually going to give us a dot product of 7 there. So v dot w is 7. Now we'll have to find the magnitude of each vector. So the magnitude of v. Magnitude of vector v, remember, is the square root of, we square all the components and add them up. So that would be the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. So we get the square root of 30 for our magnitude of vector v here. And also we'll need the magnitude of vector w. So if we look at the square root of all of these squared, so the square root of 3 squared plus negative 3 squared plus negative 2 squared. And these 3 squared are both going to be 9, so this is 9 plus another 9 plus 4 more, so that actually gives us the square root of 22. And now that we have all these, we can go ahead and put these in the formula, right? So we say the cosine of the angle between them is equal to the dot product, which was 7, divided by the product of the magnitude, so that would be square root 30 times square root 22. Now what you could do is you could certainly sort of multiply these together and put these under a root together and have a root of just one larger number. You could do that. But to find your angle to find theta, we would actually need to get rid of this cosine operation. So we would actually need to take the inverse cosine of both sides, right? So we would actually be solving theta equals the inverse cosine of all this stuff over here. 7 over root 30 times uh, root 22 down there as well. Now what you're likely to do is type this then all in a calculator and maybe get some decimal approximation of what the angle is between these two vectors. So it may not be necessary for you to do a bunch of simplifying if you're just going to type all this into the calculator anyway. And if we type inverse cosine of this into the calculator then that's going to give us approximately 74.19 degrees for our angle between our vectors. One thing that's kind of convenient about the dot product is that it's easy to calculate, so it can be a super short way to just get a ballpark idea about the angle between your vectors instead of finding the angle fully. So let's say I have a vector, v, and my other vector makes some acute angle, some angle less than 90 degrees with my original vector. Well, if you started counting the angle from V as if it were in standard position at zero degrees like I have pictured here, that angle less than 90 degrees would be in quadrant one. And what do we know about cosine for an angle in quadrant one? Well, we know that cosine is positive in quadrant one. So looking at the left side of this formula over here, let's notice something. These magnitudes in the denominator, these are going to be positive quantities down here, right? So whether we get a positive or a negative value for this entire fraction really depends on the sign of what's on top. In other words, the sign of the dot product. So if the angle is less than 90 degrees, cosine of that angle is positive, then that tells us that the dot product must be positive. So a quick way to eyeball if the angle between vectors is acute, is less than 90, is just by looking to see if a dot product of those two vectors is positive. If the angle between the vectors is greater than 90 degrees, then this angle would be in quadrant 2 in our standard position, which we know makes cosine of that angle negative. Looking over at our formula here, the only way to make the left side of this negative is for the dot product to be negative, since again, these values in the denominator must be positive. So a short way to check if two vectors have an obtuse angle between them is to find the dot product, and if it's negative, you'll know the angle is greater than 90 degrees. The biggest case is actually in between these acute and obtuse cases. What if the angle between your vectors is exactly 90 degrees? In other words, your vectors are perpendicular, or what we call orthogonal, with vectors. Well, we know that the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Right, And in order for this fraction over here on the left to be zero, then the top of that fraction must be zero. So a nice quick way to check if two vectors in space are orthogonal is to actually check if their dot product is equal to zero. So let's sort of look at an application we might see here. So this question says, for what value of a, 
are the following vectors orthogonal. I have two vectors v and w. You notice a is one of the components here. And remember that we said for vectors to be orthogonal, if v dot w is equal to zero, then that will tell you that v and vector w are orthogonal, right? In other words, the angle between them is 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and see how we could get a dot product of zero here. So our v dot w, notice we have an a in there somewhere, right? Is gonna be three times a, those first components, plus four times negative two, our second components, plus negative one times six. And so let's figure out what we have here. This would give us three a, minus eight, minus six more, right? That would be our v dot w. And if we want our vectors to be orthogonal, then we want this to be zero. So let's sort of combine our like terms here. In other words, that'll give us three a minus 14. And now if we want that to be zero, then we just figure out when is three a minus 14 equal to zero. Well, I think you'll see it if we add 14 divide by three, right? That's going to tell us that a would have to be 14 over three in order for vectors v and w to be orthogonal here. All right, hopefully you've learned a little bit about dot products and angle between vectors here. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.